Shalom, I'm Messianic Rabbi Zev Porat, and welcome to Biblical Hebrew Foundation. Bread, lechem in Hebrew. Matthew 2.1, Yeshua, Jesus, was born in Bethlehem, fulfilling Bible prophecy. Micah chapter 5, verse 2. But you, Bethlehem Ephrata, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. Yeshua, Jesus, God, was born in Bethlehem, in Hebrew, Bet Lechem, meaning house of bread. Yeshua, Jesus, is the bread of life, in Hebrew, Lechem HaChaim. John chapter 6, verse 35. Then Jesus, Yeshua, declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. I am the bread of life. Ani Lechem HaChaim, in Hebrew. In Yeshua, Jesus, God wants us to eat spiritual bread, the Word of God. Yes, Yeshua, Jesus, will provide physical food for us. But without that spiritual food, the spiritual bread, lechem, hachaim, bread of life, we cannot have eternal life, salvation, available only through Messiah Yeshua, who died on the tree on the cross for our sins, rose on the third day, and by his blood, all who repent and believe have full redemption of sins, and eternal life, and the bread of life, Yeshua, Jesus, enables us to run the race, make it to the end, and consummate the marriage. And for this reason, Yeshua, Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, Jesus, Yeshua answered, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Yeshua answered, it is written. He was quoting from the Old Testament. Because everything in the Old Testament is a shadow of the new. It's one book from Genesis to Revelation. He was quoting from Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. This is talking about spiritual food. And this is why Yeshua, Jesus is the bread of life, because he is the word. John 1.14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us in Hebrew, and the word became flesh and tabernacled among us. In the context, when Yeshua, Jesus, is quoting this Bible verse, as it is written, he's being attacked by Satan. And he answers Satan, man shall not live by bread alone, but at every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. This shows us that we're going through spiritual warfare, we need that supernatural manna from heaven, the bread of life, Yeshua, Jesus, the word, to overcome spiritual warfare. And for this reason, it's very, very important that we read the Bible, study the Bible in context. We can't just pull a Bible verse here and a Bible verse there to suit our own needs. We cannot interpret the Bible by our own understanding. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 20. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation of things. Everything was given to them by the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, in context. And when Yeshua Jesus says, man shall not live by bread alone, but out of every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord, that's speaking about the word of God in context. Let me put it this way. You don't interpret the Bible. The Bible interprets you. The Bible is God's word. And many times here in Israel, when I speak to people that either had had enough with religion and drifted away, or just became atheists. And many times they like to say it is scientifically impossible for someone to be in a fish and a big whale for three days. And my answer to them is, well, I actually believe that. And this is where I draw their attention. They say, what, you believe that? I do believe it's scientifically impossible for a man to live in a fish for three days. I also believe that it's scientifically impossible for the Red Sea to part and for people to walk through on dry land. I also believe it's scientifically impossible for a virgin, Alma, to have a child. I also believe it's scientifically impossible for a man to walk on water. And I also believe that it's scientifically impossible for a man to be raised from the dead. But I do believe it's supernatural. Let's give a praise in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. And I always tell them that doesn't prove the Bible's not true. That proves that God is God. That proves we have a supernatural, miracle-working God. You read the Word of God, there's a whole bunch of things that are scientifically impossible. If somebody's God is subject to science, I feel sorry for them. 
you realize that the first attack of Satan was to lash out at God's word. Did God really say that? If you can take a Bible verse and apply it to your needs and decide what's inspired and what's not inspired, that means you become God. That's where it leads to. And you are not God. So I always like to use this example, this simple example. The Bible is not a restaurant. It's not a menu that you choose what you like and what you don't like. You read the whole Bible in context, and God is not interested in what you like and what you don't like. He's interested in truth, and the truth can only do one thing, and that is set you free. And we believe every word that's written in the Word of God, even if we don't understand everything. The Bible is not limited to our understanding. The Bible says, and I'm paraphrasing, that God's ways are higher than our ways. God lives outside of time, eternity. He created time for us so we can understand. Ultimately, there is no time. It's eternity. That's why the Bible says that a day with the Lord is as a thousand years. And a thousand years is as a day with the Lord. And I'm paraphrasing. And that's why the enemy is doing everything he can to try to discredit God's word. It started in a garden and it's continuing right now. Because Satan knows that his time is near. Satan knows that his time is numbered. And that's what he did with Adam and Eve in the garden. He cast out on the word of God. And that spiritual warfare is continuing right now. We see it every day here in Israel as we preach the gospel. And that's why it's so important to understand that God's word is bread. It's spiritual bread. That's why we never say there's many authors of the Bible. There's many writers. But there's one author. And he's the king of kings and Lord of lords, Jesus Yeshua. And those writers were writing under the inspiration of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. Number one, the Bible is our daily bread. In Hebrew, Lechem Hayomi, our daily bread. Exodus chapter 16, verse 4. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven. Notice, bread from heaven. Lechem Yashamayim, for you. And the people shall go out and gather a certain quota every day. Notice it says every day. Every day that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. And the word for law there in Hebrew is the word Torah. And Torah only means God's word, God's instruction. That I may test them whether they will walk in my word or not. And then we go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 11. Give us this day our daily bread. Yes, I believe that's also speaking about physical bread, but it's also speaking about the spiritual bread, the word of God. God wants to give you a daily word from God. And that's why it's so important to start your day by reading the Bible. Every day, the first thing I do is pray and read the Bible. What was your word of God today? What did you receive from God today? Give us our daily bread. Here's an amazing Bible verse. I love this Bible verse. Psalm 68, verse 19. Blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits. Reading the Bible every day, being in the Word, is a supernatural benefit because it enables you to run the race, make it to the end, and consummate the marriage. And in the process, during the spiritual warfare, the sanctification process, he loads you with the benefits, kingdom benefits. We live at a time that it's easy to read the Bible. You can get it on your phones, on your computers, on your iPads. It's free, easy access to the kingdom benefits. Number two, not only is it our daily bread, it's our sustaining bread. God wants to give you a word from his word every day. And many times you'll read the Bible and then later on in the day, something will happen and you'll say, oh, that's why I read this verse today. You'll understand why God was speaking to you. And I'm sure that's happened to many of you. So it's a daily word from God. Our sustaining bread, Matthew 4, verses 3 and 4. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, if you are the son of God, command these stones to become bread. Remember, Jesus Yeshua has been fasting already for 40 days. In Matthew 4, verse 4. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. And I quoted that earlier in the message, and now we're getting the context. Yeshua, Jesus, used the word of God as a spiritual warfare weapon against Satan. Three times he answers Satan and says, It is written, it is written, it is written. And he wants us to have daily bread 
And he set the example. He's God. John 13, verse 15. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. And we can see here that Yeshua, Jesus, God, uses the word of God in spiritual warfare combat against Satan. It is written, it is written, it is written. Notice the Bible verse doesn't say, by every word that you like, by every word that's taken out of context. It says, by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. That's everything from Genesis to Revelation in context. We need food to sustain our natural bodies. You need spiritual food to sustain your spiritual bodies. Let me say it a different way. Many believers are dying from spiritual malnutrition because they're not eating the word of God. This is bread, the word of God. Isaiah 55 verse 2. Why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good. In other words, why do you spend your time not feeding your spirit? Listen carefully and eat what is good. That's referring to the Bible, the word of God, and let your soul delight itself in abundance. In other words, the word of God is going to feed your soul. Daily bread, the bread of life. Lechem HaKaim in Hebrew. Look at Job chapter 23, verse 12. I have treasured the words of his mouth. That would be the Bible more than my necessary food. And we can keep on going. It is a biblical pattern. Look at Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. This book of the law, and again, the word law in Hebrew is the word Torah, which only means God's instruction, God's word. It's not religion. This book of the law, the word, shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. Now watch this. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have a good success. I'm going to read it again. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. I can't emphasize enough how much this Bible verse and other Bible verses like this have been taken out of context for the prosperity gospel. That's why it's so dangerous to take a Bible verse here and a Bible verse there and apply it to what you want. Because if you do that, you can pretty much apply a Bible verse to anything you want. That's why it's so important that we read the Bible with spiritual eyes through the Holy Spirit and don't take anything out of context. And so the context here is God wants to bless you, but he wants to enable you to be an ambassador for the kingdom. He wants you to enable you to be a light in this dark world. And he wants to enable you to run the race and make it to the end, what we call the sanctification process, to die in Messiah Yeshua daily, repent and run the race, make it to the end and consummate the marriage. That's what this Bible verse is speaking about. It's to enable us to be in the world, but not of the world. And in that process, yes, God will bless us. But you can see how Bible verses like this can be abused and be turned into chocolate messages. According to that verse we just read, it's the most important thing that you could ever do. It's meditate on God's word daily, the bread. And here's the third point. It's not only our daily bread and our sustained bread. It's our true bread. So it's our true bread. What do I mean by this? Remember, we started with manna and it said bread from heaven. Now watch what Yeshua, Jesus says. In John chapter 6, verse 31, our fathers ate the manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Now, the context here is the Pharisees speaking to Yeshua, to Jesus. Now, watch what Yeshua answers them in John 6, 32. Then Jesus, Yeshua, said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my father gives you the true bread from heaven. Now, notice he didn't say he didn't give you bread from heaven. He said he didn't give you the bread from heaven. He gave you bread from heaven, but not the bread from heaven, as it says in Hebrew. The bread from heaven. Look at verse 33. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then verse 34. Then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. Watch what Yeshua answers them in John 6, 35. I love this. And Jesus, Yeshua said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. 
Then look at John 6, verse 48. I am the bread of life. In Hebrew, Ani, who, Lechem Achaim. Yeshua, Jesus, is the bread of life. He is the word. The word of God is manna, bread from heaven. Look at verse 49. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and are dead. Look at verse 50. This is the bread which comes down from heaven. The one may eat of it and not die. Verse 51. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give him is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. John 1.1. 1, 1, In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. Yeshua is God. Yeshua is the word. Yeshua is the bread of life. Look at Revelation 19, verses 11 to 13. Now I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he who sat on him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no one knew except himself. This is speaking about Yeshua, Jesus, God. He was clothed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Why is it so important to know this? When you read the Bible, you are taking in Yeshua, Jesus, God. Look at John chapter 6, verse 63. Jesus said, Yeshua, the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. I'm going to say it again. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life, eternal life. The more you read the word of God in context, the more Yeshua, Jesus, gets inside of you. Think about this. We have the key to everything. We have the secret mystery to miracles. We have God's autobiography. Not biography. He wrote it. We have the words of eternal life. We have the answer to every problem. And it's an app on phones that people very seldom open. I can promise you, based on the Word of God, the more you're in the Word, the more it changes your life. Many times when we pray here in Israel, God directs us to a scripture. Our decisions are made by the power of the Holy Spirit, are made by the Word of God. Doesn't mean we always understand everything, but we know that He works all things for good. Pray and ask yourself today, what is the Holy Spirit saying to you? Because many times people email us or ask us, I don't think God is speaking to me. God speaks to us every day through his word, the daily manna, the daily bread. I pray this teaching has blessed you as it has blessed me over the years. Let's continue to stand together as the one new man, Ephesians 2.15. Work the harvest together, bring the gospel back to Jerusalem, and go home. And for Zion's sake, we will not keep silent. Isaiah 62 verse 1. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet till her vindication shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. And we know that the word for salvation in Hebrew is the word Yeshua, her Yeshua, her Jesus, like a blazing torch. And we know that he's coming back with fire in his eyes as the lion of the tribe of Judah, Al Yehuda, to take back everything that the enemy has stolen. And until that time, we will continue to preach the gospel no matter what. Until next time. I'm Messianic Rabbi Zef Porat sending you blessings from Israel in the mighty name of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Al Yehuda, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Great I Am, Jesus Yeshua. Amen. Every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Yeshua, Jesus, is God. Hallelujah. Amen. Those just joining us at home, I'm going to introduce this week's special guests. Born and raised in Israel, he served several years in the Israeli Defense Forces and is the founder and director of Messiah of Israel Ministries, Messianic Rabbi Zev Parat. Yay! Good to have you back. Dr. Tom Horn, who is the CEO of Skywatch TV, an acclaimed best-selling author himself, raves about Blood Alliance. He says, Messianic Rabbi Zef Parat has done it again. In Blood Alliance, he's taken several deep mysteries of God's Word and served them up in a thoroughly understandable, engrossing, and biblically contextual manner. 
I assure you, he says, once you see the truths that Zev brings into glorious revelation, you'll soon begin to recognize those truths throughout the scriptures, hidden in plain sight from first to last. Blood Alliance is an absolute treasure trove. Have you ever heard of God's threshold covenant? If you haven't, you're in for a roller coaster ride of biblical discovery that will enhance your understanding of God's Word and the application of it to your daily life like never before. Messianic Rabbi Zef Parad will be taking you on a much deeper dive than you've probably ever previously experienced. In Blood Alliance, you'll come to understand the true nature of spiritual warfare like never before. You'll uncover the biblical truth about long-held traditions that still assault God's truth and His grace to this very day, throwing massive doctrinal confusion into almost the entire modern Christian church world. Finally, learn the truth about the temple on the Temple Mount and what the Old Testament and New Testament clearly lay out for the last days. Shocking surprises await you. This truly is a life-changing book to the glory of Yeshua, Jesus.